And the answer in any type of behavioral issue is always going to be skills. I mean, it's just going to be that way if it's that, if that's an analytical skill or you have a very good cognitive skill. But in the end, you'll have to apply a motor skill also. You have to understand setups. You have to create imagination to come up with setups. And this doesn't go from copy-paste. I'm like, Let me explain this one very carefully. If you sit into a class and the class is called, I'm going to show you what you do with reactive behavior. Well, first, let me tell you, there's a million situations, so you can't go over each and every scenario, right? So what they will show you is dog behavior, is dog posture, is things that are actually pure cognitive uh, level. That means they're going to give you information that's in a book. It's going to give you information on how to see dogs, how to read dogs, body language, and so on. But that's not you being able to analyze then what happens and being quickly to understand and to intervene. Because intervention means now we go into practical application. means you, motor skills, decision-making. You applying what you know cognitively and you've analyzed, assessed in the split second and you come with solutions. That's not something you're going to teach, uh, sorry, you're going to learn in a reactive behavior class. That is pure skill development. So you can't go do one without the other. So you have to put your feet on the ground and understand that if you want to master dogs, but you're so one lopsided in development that you can understand dogs better than anyone, but you cannot do the things that need to be done fast, accurate, with leash skills, with finesse, with tools, and so on, how are you ever going to be a great dog trainer? Because now this, this person then might be so smart, they could talk all day about dogs, and then when you see them actually try to create the solution or solve the problem hands-on, it doesn't really look all that good now, you see? And that's why, for example, veterinarians, I still don't understand why the government always talks, ref refers to veterinarians when it comes to uh, behavior-related problems. W what do they know? They, they read a book. They studied it. Maybe they got a master or PhD about dogs and behavior. That doesn't mean they can apply anything. So for me, the application is just as valuable as having the cognitive skill. If you just apply things, we don't know why you're doing it. That's just luck then. It's just action without any, any contemplation on how it's going to turn out. So that's just equally as, as stupid, right? But you need the both, guys. So you can't just go, I'm, I'm, I only know about behavior. Don't ask me anything. Look, I'm not a behaviorist, but I know how to control energy and behavior. But that doesn't make me a behaviorist because I didn't take the class of behavior. But I have dogs with behavioral issues, but I solve them with a different approach. My answer has always been skill. For the police also, common reactive dogs, redirecting dogs, like any type of dog, we come with a skill set. That's what's going to solve the problem. We always create purpose. We have long-term vision. We can handle tools. We can handle leashes. We can manipulate the thinking patterns of the dog. We can contemplate setups. We can prepare things. We can communicate with a team based on skills. And that's, that's how we go for success. That's just the only way for me has always been practical application of multiple skills being combined simultaneously. So you have a better, faster, more efficient outcome than anybody else. But that said, faster, more efficient can only be done if you've acquired those necessary skills. And that means sometimes it takes longer for you to acquire those skills than it takes to solve the problem. But without the skills, you can't solve it. You see? So there, it's inevitably connected. You and the dog. If you're going to train the dog, you have to be skilled. There is no other way.